Google unveiled the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro today, but we already knew everything about it because they let everything leak months before they even announced the date for the launch event. But Google's desperate attempts to drum up hype for the Pixel 6 make more sense when you realize that after five years of trying to make Google phones a thing, 11 if you count the Nexi, Google phones still account for only around two to 4% of the smartphone market. But the Pixel 6 is going to change everything. It's got Tensor, Google's first mobile chip designed in-house. Apple made their own chips and look at them, everybody loves them. So let's look at what Google announced today and see whether the Pixel 6 is worth being excited about. But you shall be excited by our sponsor, Glasswire. Glasswire lets you instantly see your current and past network activity. It lets you detect malware and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device. Use offer code Linus and get 25% off Glasswire at the link below. The Pixel 2, 3, and 4 were all more or less the same phone as their XL counterparts, with a few minor differences like battery and display size. But at $899, the Pixel 6 Pro has a number of notable upgrades over the $599 Pixel 6, including a slightly bigger and higher resolution curved edge display, smaller bezels, and an adaptive refresh rate up to 120 hertz instead of 90. Both phones have a 50 megapixel wide and 12 megapixel ultra wide on the back, but the Pro has an additional 48 megapixel telephoto lens using what they call folded optics, but I'm going to continue calling it a periscope lens until they learn we want an actual little periscope to come out of the camera. Can we, can we make that? I'm tired of waiting, Google, make it happen. The Pro also has a better front camera, 11.1 megapixels instead of eight, and inside it's got more RAM and higher capacity storage options, which are bafflingly limited by color. What's that? You'd like to order a 512 gig Pixel 6 Pro in sorta sunny? You idiot, that amount of storage is obviously incompatible with that color and with cloudy white, but cloudy white can do 256. It unlocked that storage tier when it gained enough experience points. And you can unlock this water bottle and experience the taste of LTTstore.com. <laughs> but it's what the two Pixel 6s share that's more important. Google Tensor, the brand new chip designed by Google and custom made for Pixel by Samsung, who may have also designed it because Tensor might actually be that Samsung Exynos 9855 that was spotted in leaks. And maybe that's not true, but the chip diagram Google showed off today had the same number of high performance, mid-tier, and high efficiency cores as an XDA developer's leak. The same one that claimed Google was confusingly using two ARM Cortex A76 cores from 2018 instead of the more recent A77 or A78. Look, regardless of whether Google bore most of the load in making this chip or not, it's clear that they're standing behind it, claiming it packs 80% faster CPU performance and 370% faster graphics than the Pixel 5, thanks to a new 20-core GPU. Those are some Apple Silicon numbers, especially when it was compared to its own predecessor and not its current competition. For that, you'd have to ask Gamers Nexus. <laughs> Steve? The only other indicators we saw today of Tensor's performance were the new camera software features available in the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro that take advantage of Tensor's machine learning chops. And I gotta say, they look pretty cool. Magic Eraser is like Photoshop's content-aware fill, but baked right into the Android camera app. It's not something that was impossible to do on phones, but being able to quickly squiggle a guy out of existence for having the audacity to obscure your photograph seems satisfying. I'm an artist. There are also a couple features for both blurring and unblurring photos. Face Unblur combines images from the wide and ultra wide rear cameras so you can save a smudgy photo you otherwise would have immediately deleted in frustration and shame. While Motion Mode lets you add motion blur to elements of a photo on purpose. The results apparently end up looking like a long exposure photo, except you didn't have to tell your friends to remain perfectly still in front of a Ferris wheel or a train for a long time, which is great news because my friends are tired of me doing this to them. <laughs> Again, artist, it's a struggle, <laughs> it's my burden. Another thing Tensor's machine learning abilities help with is analyzing a scene to make sure that photo subjects of all skin colors and complexions are accurately represented. It's an issue that has been highlighted in the media production industry for a long time, so it's cool to see Google trying to make sure photos capture what people actually look like, which I think is the whole idea of a photo? 
So there was one thing in today's keynote that I hadn't seen referenced in any leaks, and which I was actually quite happy about. Developers will be able to incorporate Google's camera features into non-Google apps. So you won't have to switch to your camera app, take a photo, and then attach it to a WhatsApp message to avoid using the built-in WhatsApp camera, which looks like ass. On my phone anyway. But Tensor isn't all about photos. The chip will also be using its power to make voice dictation a lot faster and contextual, doing things like remembering how to spell difficult names, like Catherine. Is it a C? A K? Question mark? Just kidding, you don't even have to say question mark anymore. And Android's live caption feature is being expanded with live translate. Google's been showing off some form of real-time translation or another for years now, but this time they got Marie Kondo. Remember her? The Spark Joy lady from 2019? The year that ended up sparking anything but joy? Anyways, they got her to come on and try out the feature, and she said it was really good. So, I mean, she would have thrown it out if it was bad, right? <laughs> but no, it's here, inside your chat app. Most importantly though, we're getting a kind of successor to Screen Call, the coolest pixel feature in my recent memory. Direct My Call will listen to automated phone menu systems and give you an on-screen UI to navigate instead, while Hold For Me will stay on hold for you. So should you stay on hold while Google restocks the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro on their store, which crashed repeatedly during the live stream? That remains to be seen. Since even though we have the Google Pixel 6 here, and we're allowed to tell you that we have it, we can't directly show you anything that it can actually do yet. So nice job on these, Google. But unless our tests show some real promise, I might just wait for the Pixel 6a. But don't wait to check out our sponsor, Vessi. Vessi footwear is known for being lightweight, easy to pack, comfortable, and most importantly, waterproof. Designed to keep you moving, Vessi released their new Everyday Move shoes. With enhanced breathability and added support, this style is perfect for the adventurous or those looking for something a little sportier. <laughs> Featuring a pull tab to take them off and put them on with ease, vegan suede lace cages, extra midsole cushioning, and the same waterproof Dymatex technology, you'll wanna wear them everywhere. And I mean everywhere. The dual climate knit material keeps your feet warm during winter and cool during summer. So stay dry and get your Vessi shoes today at Vessi.com slash Linus Tech Tips and get $25 off using code Linus Tech Tips at checkout. Thanks for watching guys. Hey, if you're looking for something else to watch, go watch uh, Anthony's summary of the Apple event yesterday. Get caught up. There's a lot of news this week.